meet me at the corner of Russell and Albina, just about a block from Mississippi Avenue. I'll take you to a house where they hang carpets on the wall. And if we go there on a Sunday, there's a song I'll take you through. Well, welcome to Open Mic America. I'm Daphne Ramil, your MC, and Dave Williams, who's also our ONA founder, <clears throat> is our engineer tonight. And we have Rob and Penny Cork as our nifty interviewing duo. Um, our mission is to support your local open mics, and we are presenting the best of the best here at Open Mic America without gimmicks and frills. This is the beating heart of American music, the tapestry of story and song that's been weaving us together for generations. And now let's introduce all our performers. First, we have Bill Hernandez from Portland, Oregon. Wave to us, Bill, yes. William Woltz from Raleigh, North Carolina. Joseph Isaacs from Columbia, Maryland. Yep. Mike Simpson from Saratoga, California. Ron Smith, now from Jefferson City, Missouri. Bill Palmer from Murray, Kentucky. Julie Grower from Nashville, Tennessee. And Susan Lee Anderson from Taunton, Massachusetts. So let's get right to it and invite Bill Hernandez from Portland, Oregon to open our show. He likes to play at the Influence Music Hall and they are at the Odd Fellows Lodge on Odd Months and at the Pythians Lodge in downtown Hillsboro on Even Months. And every open, uh, every Friday there is an open mic night. So take it away, Bill. Okay, well, thanks for having me and I really appreciate it. It's fun to be back here and I guess, uh, you know, I've been writing songs for about eight and a half years, ever since my divorce. And most of the songs I write about are either about divorce or broken hearts or anything about dating. But I'm going to start with this one song I wrote. It's called uh, Your Side of the World. And I dedicate it to anyone who's ever tried to get over a tough breakup. days if I think about you there's not much that I recall your hair might have been black or brown you might have been short or tall these days I go days not thinking about you you're the last thing my mind just as long as you stay on your side of the world and I'll stay on mine just as long as you stay on your side of the world and I'll stay on mine Bright and early, no more memories to unwind. Oh, I'll bet your favorite game is Twister, cause you sure got a twisted mind. These days I go days not thinking about you. You're the last thing. Just as long as you stay on your side of the world And I'll stay on mine Just as long as you 
stay on your side of the world And I'll stay on mine Just as long as you stay on your side of the world And I'll stay on mine Yes, that was so relatable, Bill. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> that was awesome. That was good. People out there have had their hearts broken, I take it. Us? I no. like the twisted mind part. <laughs> Remember that game? Remember Twisted? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll do my second song. And uh, this is a song I wrote. It's called Talk to Jesus. And I wanted to write a, a gospel song. My guitar instructor and I were talking about this challenge and uh, this is what I came up with, and uh, I have just a couple of friends that are just going through some really rough times right now, and I just wanted to really write a song that would uh, dedicate it to them. So it's called Talk With Jesus. I had a talk Jesus, one of those come to Jesus talks. I said, hey man, what are you thinking? I said, hey man, when's enough enough? He just looked at me with those kind eyes, and he didn't say much at all, except these words I still remember. Before you stand, you gotta fall. Before you stand, talk with Jesus. I knew he'd know what to say. He understood everything I'd been going through. He was there to help me find my way. He just looked at me with those kind eyes, and he didn't say much at all, except these words I still remember. Before you stand, you gotta fall. Before you stand, you gotta fall. He was looking right through me. Every word he spoke was true. I couldn't believe what he told me. I should be the one following you. I should be the one following you. I should be the one following you. I had a talk with Jesus. I knew he'd relate to my pain. He said, before you feel any sunshine, you got to stand in the rain. He just looked at me. at all, except these words I still remember, before you stand, you gotta fall, before you stand, you gotta fall, before you stand, you gotta fall. interviewing duo rob and penny you get to ask this man all the questions you want now <laughs> nice hey, hey, hi bill hey bill that sounded great my friend thank you so much uh, we talked about that one line remember penny about the we, we did talk the, about uh, it i was a little yeah. concerned about that one but you know i just thought just go for it you know what that's part of the creative process isn't it just being true to yourself and and writing what you feel and i know that that's really what you're great at. Yeah, uh, 
So you've been writing songs for coming up to nine years now. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I got divorced, I found, you know, I played guitar growing up. Uh, you know, I raised two girls, though, and didn't play for like 22 years. And when I got divorced, just started playing again and found it was just great therapy. Mm -hmm. And then I started online dating and realized there's so much great material out there to write about. So. <laughs> yes, and some of those stories I've heard. Yeah. And I I think they would make some interesting songs, but well. that's a topic for another moment. Um, so, hey, where has um, your desire to play music taken you um, beyond what you expected or maybe you didn't have any expectations? You know, I, yeah, you know, I worked at Nike for 24 years. I had the greatest job, a cush job as a video producer. I traveled all around the world, would interview the world's greatest athletes. But three and a half years ago, I just decided uh, both my girls were gone. And, you know, there were just some things happening at Nike. And I just thought it was a great time to retire. So I decided to retire three and a half years ago to pursue my passion and hobby for writing music and, and singing and playing. And it's just opened up so many doors. I mean, it's been incredible. I'm on the... You know, with Rob, we're both on the board at Influence Music Hall, and I'm also um, in charge of all the performers that are performing at this Chalk Festival in July, uh, in a couple weeks, actually, at the main stage, there's the La Strada Chalk Festival. So I'm working with Tualatin Valley Crates. I'm on their board as the uh, kind of the guy in charge of music. And I also teach beginning guitar and ukulele at American Guitar Academy in downtown Hillsboro. So I feel like I'm busier now than ever. It's crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> definitely. And you have definitely moved into keeping a creative hand in pretty much everything you're doing as far as um, Tualatin Valley Creates, Influence Music Hall, teaching, and now lining up acts for other venues. Yeah. So One thing I really love is, is just really kind of building the database of, of musicians, especially in Hillsborough. There's just so much great talent. And I love, uh, you know, we all, we do this first Tuesday art walk in downtown Hillsboro. And there, last month there were 21 venues that participated and we had three musicians in each venue. So it's a lot of talent. And downtown Hillsboro is just so supportive of local music. It, it's great. Absolutely. Yes, you know, you're now the empresario, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get you a big cigar and a hat. But yeah, there you that'll, go. That'll, that'll come, you know. And so, Bill, if you could sort of imagine um where would you like your music to take you beyond where you are now well that's a great question you know i just want to keep i want to keep writing and just being uh influenced uh by you know i want to write i want to write a song for my kids uh, I, I just have these projects in mind i want to write a song in spanish and i want oh. to write a song it's kind of a legacy just advice that a dad would give his kids Mm -hmm. And then just, like I said, always trying to find uh, inspiration. You know, this woman told me uh, we were talking online and she, we, we were going to go out. And she said, oh, don't threaten me with a good time. Oh, <laughs> yeah. What a great line. Don't threaten oh, me with a good time. Um, yeah, it's from a Luke Combs song. Oh, is that right? Don't, oh, I didn't don't know tempt that. me with a good time. Wow, okay. Well, I mean, I maybe other know. people have used it too, but yeah, but yeah definitely Luke Combs. Yeah, don't be afraid of it. It's still got plenty of yeah, mileage. It's, it's still a good, yeah, it's still a good <laughs> line. Um. So just and, continue playing, just keep, you know, being inspired. And, you know, I love, I love playing with your husband too, Penny. I mean, yeah. He's a very busy man. You guys are awesome and, together. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, you guys are really Yeah, it's a, it's, it is a really good time, so. So. Um, My oldest daughter thinks we sound good together, Rob. We, we sound good together, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you impress the kid, you're in, you're in good shape. And then, Bill, since you started performing as a mature person, shall we say, um, <laughs> Would you, what advice would you give someone who maybe has played the guitar a little bit, sang a little bit, never really had the opportunity because of that day job? What would you, what would you say? How would I would, you? I would say, first of all, just try to make it fun. You know, we try it when we, where we teach at it, American Guitar Academy, just say, you know, what, what, what's going to make it exciting for you to pick up the guitar every day? And the biggest thing for me was really just kind of getting out of your own head. Because when you're first starting, you go to open mics, you, you'll see a guy like Rob who can just start picking and playing lead on any song. And you just can't compare yourself. You just got to stay on your own journey, stay in your own head. And most of all, just have fun. And, and like I said, just stay out of your own head. Because there's always going to be someone better than you, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That is fantastic advice. Bill, thank you so much for being well, on you guys. Yeah. America. We'll see all you Tuesday night. Top or me's. Looking sounds, forward to it. You know I'll good. be there. All right. <laughs> You're the man, brother. 
Nice guys. Well, that was excellent advice indeed. That's something we can all take away with us. Whether we are mature performers or not, it doesn't matter. It's always true. Um, next up, we have William Waltz from Raleigh, North Carolina, and he's playing this coming Thursday, July 6th at Pluck Farm Steel String Brewery in Mebane. Um, I think I said that right, in Mebane, North Carolina. And yeah. if you go to his Reverb Nation page, you can check out archived radio show he did with his musical partner, Angela Di Paolo last month. And I believe all the links for all the performers are on our website and you can find it on this YouTube as well. So now let's welcome William Waltz from Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay, thank Yay. you very much. Um, I'm clearly an older performer. I don't know when you get to be a mature performer, however. I feel like uh, maturity is always next year sometime. And uh, we seem to have a bit of a theme going here, and I promise I have not coordinated with Bill Hernandez at all, but my first song is also a bit of a breakup song, uh, one that I wrote many years ago, but I still pull it out once in a while, and it's called I Get Along. Yeah. <laughs> All right, very nice. 
So the next song is kind of self-explanatory. It's a, it's a topical song, and I call it Great Again. <clears throat> Everything that you hold dear will make this country great 
Somebody's got to say it. <laughs> well, my goodness, you're going to have a lot to talk about with Robin Penny. Take it away. I just lost my voice. Oh, no. Uh, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, hi, right. William. <laughs> but I lost, I lost a lot of the words there. It would, that would have been a better song if I had remembered it. Oh, oh. I, I think I think it I think it uh, I think it came across real well. Yeah, I could, yes. I could definitely do some some unpacking on that one. There's some definitely some uh, yeah. some inspired moments yeah. in that song. So it seems like you um, are writing from a level of emotion on um, both of those songs. Yeah, I I <laughs> usually do. I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. And how did you get started in music? How long have you been playing and writing songs? Uh, oh, those are two different things. I've been playing guitar well over 50 years. I mean, you know, I got a guitar when I was a kid, mm -hmm. like a lot of us did. Yeah. Um, so well over 50 years, and I've played in commercial bands and beach music bands and all that. I started writing maybe about 20 years ago. And I'm not particularly prolific. I write maybe um, one, two, three songs a year. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, something comes to me, something seems to be important, and I'll just kind of sit down and, and knock out some ideas, and there it is. Mm -hmm. And do you have a, a method that you follow for writing a song, or...? So just... It's pretty haphazard, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, I often, often have a guitar in hand, you know, like a lot of people, I'll come up with a, a lick or a groove or something, and, and some words will just sort of fit that rhythmically, and then, then you go back and try to make them fit intelligently. <laughs> but, right. but not all, I mean, you know, that's the way McCartney writes songs. He comes up with a groove and then he puts in a filler li lyric and then he goes back and puts in a real lyric mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Um, but I also sometimes just don't have an instrument anywhere nearby. I'm, I'm pushing a lawnmower, I'm driving a car, I'm doing something else completely random and mm -hmm. I'll just get uh, um, a turn of phrase in my head. I'll get a, a piece of lyric first. Mm -hmm. And I'll start developing that and uh, get part of it done before I actually sit down with an instrument. Mm -hmm. So it can go either way. Lyrics can come first. Music can come first. It's, it's, it's pretty random. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, uh, you know, especially with that second number, how therapeutic is a song like that for you? <laughs> Depends on the audience, I think, and how they... You know, they don't throw things. I was thinking more of the writing process, but yeah, yeah I mean, the yeah. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, that that one. Um, I actually got the idea for that on January 5th of 2021. And the rest of it just kind of fell into place real quickly in, in the next couple of days. If if you get my drift. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Literally and figuratively. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm. And then uh, you had mentioned Paul McCartney. Um, who are your musical influences? A um, lot of them are guitar players, mm -hmm. you know. I like the old blues guitar players. Uh, I'm a big B.B. King fan. Mm -hmm. Jazz guitar players, Wes Montgomery. Uh, flat pickers, um, Norman Blake, Doc Watson. Uh, lyrically, you know, I went through a Dylan phase when I was in high school, um, everything up to about, um, you know, John Wesley Harding. Mm -hmm. I, a funny thing is I haven't really listened to Dylan a whole lot since Blood on the Tracks, and I know that's like half his career or more, um, but I really like the stuff that he was doing for about the first 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, that really appeals to me. John Prine, mm -hmm. uh, people that, uh, I'm drawing a blank, but just people that can tell a story. I, I used to work in radio, and they used to uh, tell us that a good announcer is somebody who can tell a big story in a small space. Mm. And that's, and that's a good applies one. to, for example, John Prine. You know, yeah, very few absolutely. words, very few chords, and you have such a complete mental picture of of these characters and their situation Absolutely. so that's the sort of thing that i uh aspire to yeah yeah a world in three verses you know right yeah. three chords in the truth 
Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. And then, William, what do you have uh, upcoming for shows, or where can we? Well, play I'm Wyatt? playing. I'm, as you, I think these. No. I'm playing a week from now. I'm playing Thursday night. Less than a week from now, a Thursday night at uh, Pluck Farm, which is a brewery in in Mebane, North Carolina, uh, about an hour west of Raleigh. Mm -hmm. I have. Um, I'm hosting a songwriter's circle. I actually jotted this down. I'm hosting a songwriter's circle on Friday, July 21st at 7 p.m. at Gatsby's Bar in North Raleigh, and I'll be playing with Harold Morton and Richard Shear. This is something on behalf of the North Carolina Songwriters Co-op. Um, the, the practical matter is if you own a PA system, you often get to host these things. Ah. So. Uh, so, <laughs> nice. yeah. But that that's cool. That's fine. Yeah. And my musical partner and I, Angela DePaolo, are playing on July 13th at um, Blackbird Brewing in Wake Forest, North Carolina. And um, we do, we probably got about 20 odd covers. I mean, 20 odd, very odd originals that we do. And yeah. the covers tend to be a little more off the beaten path. So we, okay. we try to keep it interesting. She plays violin. Oh, nice. So it's, um, that's a, a, a partnership that I'm real happy with and, and hope some folks can come see us. Yeah, I had a chance to, uh, to sneak on your, on your online presence and listen to some of this. So if you guys have, have a really good rapport, so that's, that's, a, yeah, that's gotta be a, a, a really good musical relationship right there. I, I feel very fortunate for wow. that, yeah. Well, William, it was a pleasure listening to you and getting a chance to get to know you a little better. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to the rest of the evening. Absolutely. Right, well, William, thank you again. And ditto what Robin Penny said. It was a pleasure. And for the record, I'm a big fan of violin guitar duos. Cool. Um, next, we have Joseph Isaacs from Columbia, Maryland. And he runs and performs at the Music Matters Showcase. I love that name. It has a virtual and an in-person format also. And you can find it by messaging him on Facebook or searching for the Music Matters Showcase. Um, the in-person version has been happening for over 20 years in Maryland. Well, that is longevity for you. So welcome, Joseph Isaacs from Columbia, Maryland. Thank you very much, Daphna. Thank you, everybody uh, from Open Mic America for and all the musicians. You've been great. I can't wait to hear everybody's set. You know, I'm addicted to, I guess, writing songs because I keep on writing more songs. And I've got a kind of a ridiculous number. I'm not complaining. I think I'm lucky. It's a lucky problem I have, but uh, this is a brand new one. And uh, I hope you like it. It's called. Um, there's no such thing as a broken heart. I know you won't believe me Or even worse you And then you feel too much pressure Cause things will have gotten too real But if I do not tell you You might just drift away And then I'll never know if you might have Felt the same way And hearts don't really break they scream, they sting, they bend But in the end You will love again Hearts don't really break I know you don't believe me Or even worse you will And then there'll be someone else Who's my, my shoes they can fill But 
hearts don't really breathe The heart is just a muscle And no love goes to waste You just get stronger Hearts don't really breathe No, you don't believe me Hearts don't really breathe Very much Follow that up with a uh, song about being there.
Hi, Joseph. Hi, how are you? I'm well. Two... Thank you for uh, doing all the hard work on this. Oh, we're just talking. Yeah, you're the one digging Dave deep. Dave and Daphne, they're the they're the heavy lifters in the crew. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you all. It's a real pleasure, and it's um, you know, an important thing you're doing. Uh, I think music is so important, and, and this type of music and bringing people together. So thank you for doing that. Absolutely. Those were two very beautiful, very thought-provoking songs. Um, on the last one, the second song that you did, um. Yeah. You have a story about the inspiration for that one? Oh, that's actually a really old one, surprisingly. Um, surprisingly, because I think it's kind of uh, on the wiser side of, um, but like um, 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 sometimes like, I don't know. I mean, I think that, you know, it's always relationships have always kind of been for me and like i've been fortunate because i have a, a wonderful wife who um we've been married for uh 20, 20 25 years now oh congratulations and thank you and she's made it easy and she's put up with me uh, I've, I've been the hard she's she's just the one who had to do the heavy lifting and <laughs> but for me like i think like figuring out all that stuff kind of um and you know it can be with a love relationship or it could be with anything you do in life but like you know the music but any type of thing where you have to sort of persevere and um and do your best and i know that it doesn't always work out like with the relationships and uh and i hope that in the first song that comes clear that you will love again you know that that you you that doesn't mean it's the end that you can still um and that it wasn't a waste, you know, because you loved and you cared and you were there and you went through that experience and you came out stronger through it. And so, I don't know, relationships have always kind of intrigued me because they're so important and so hard. And um, I mean, life is full of relationships. I mean, everything we do is a sort of relationship. So Absolutely. You know, I, I really like the line about the, the heart is the heart is a muscle, you know, that's just, Thank you. It's, it's a it's a context changer, which is which is really good. You know, you've got the, the point of view where it's all this emotional thing, and it's like, wait, you're doing reps. You know, you're you're you know you're building something here. It's not going to break. It's you know it's going to get stronger. It's going to get stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. That one caught me for sure. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. And then um, at the beginning, you had mentioned how music matters, and I know that you're involved in music matters. Mm -hmm. Would you like to talk about that a little? Sure. Um, so when I first started playing out, I would play open mics and I would hear some terrific musicians and I'd go to their shows and there'd be like two people in the audience. And <laughs> I was like, what is wrong with this picture? And um, <laughs> um, I sort of came to the conclusion that you all have by with this Open Mic America that we can do more together than we can do separately. So I started doing the showcase. And I haven't looked back. I've just been enjoying it. Um, I mean, you all know this more than anyone, just how much talent is out there. And yeah. it's like um, we sort of live in this celebrity obsessed world. But here's the thing about celebrities, right? They have the spotlight on them. They couldn't play that song that William just played, right? Because um, they would be like, Oh, I can't say that. Oh, I can't, you know, but, <laughs> but, he, but, you know, we can be more honest. <laughs> and so, I mean, I think that, um, you know, celebrities, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's not the only game in town. And you all know this, and I know this, but there's um, a lot to be said for um, just getting people together at a more local level and just seeing what people really have to say when they're not like being scared routinized or produced or and all that stuff you know well, well like you said it's about relationships you know it's, it's a community mm -hmm. those relationships are all mm -hmm. the biggest deal mm -hmm. Definitely. absolutely absolutely we get we give we we're all like in, in like a like um i think some of the so some of the celebrities will sometimes forget that right because they'll be like 
kind of just so focused on themselves. And um, but it, but really, where would they have been without the first fan that let people know about them, and the other fan that told somebody else, and all that? And it was all actually about those relationships and the little people. And um, and I think that's the incredible thing about like places like Open Mic America is we can all meet each other and hear each other and like come away with something that we would never have heard otherwise. And uh -huh. we could all meet Grover Duffield and we can all meet, um, you know, uh, William Wolt and Bill Hernandez and all these wonderful people. And um, uh, so, yeah, I thank you guys again. Uh, it's really an honor to be able to play here and an honor to be part of this and just, I'm glad you're, you're still doing it. I hope you keep on doing it. Absolutely. Joseph, it was a pleasure listening to you tonight. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. My pleasure. <laughs> Thanks. I was muted. Thank you for the music and for the very kind words too, Joseph. Much, much appreciated. Next, we're going to have someone who I am proud to call my friend, Mike Simpson from Saratoga, California. And by the way, he's also a host on this show. He wears many hats. Um, he'd like to shout out the Unitarian Universalist Church Open Mic in San Jose. And of course, Open Mic America. Welcome again, Mike. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Always a pleasure to be here. And uh, let's jump right into the songs here. So this first one here has an image that uh, due to time and location is perhaps less well known to people than it might be. So I'm actually going to explain it a little bit. My aunt my father's sister, she had a bar in Weir, Kansas. I'm, I was born in Kansas. And in that bar, she had a clock on the wall. And it had as its big main part, the land of sky blue waters with the water rippling and this old timey special effect as it went by. I love that clock. I love watching the water go on that clock. Um, and uh, it told the time and it told you what kind of beers to buy. Um, so that's the image on the uh, the little the little chorus here. If you've never has seen one of those. I've made up my mind. I know it's past time I know that that bottle Is no friend of mine Now I'm making my peace Now I'll silence the beast I'm taking a pass until I'm at least half past sober again. I'm going to fight every day, making my way, bring back who I was. For you went away Taking stand Getting back in command I reach out a hand Getting help where I can Half past sober Clock on the wall is selling me beer. I don't want to fall, but I can't stand tall sitting here. You said to leave you alone. 
so I won't pick up the phone. You will need to be shown that I really have grown. This might be my last chance to get back in the dance. So I will try to advance my best self and make plans to be half past over again. Oh, that there clock on the wall, it's selling me beer, and I don't want to fall. But I can't stand tall sitting here So I've made up my mind I know it's past time I know that that bottle Is no friend of mine now I'm making my peace Now I'll silence the bees Taking a pass Until I'm at least Half past over again Yeah, I'm taking a pass Until I'm at last Half past over again. Nice. I can see the hams appear. In the land of sky, the moon. Hope that doesn't cut in my second song. All right. This one uh, is one of these things is not like the other. This is, uh, one of these songs is not. <laughs> um, so this one is uh, I call it insubstantial. I don't believe the weird ever appears in the song, but I think you'll get it. I look high, I look low Seems the more I examine the less I know I watch you, you watch me And the more we look perhaps the less we see I go far, I go fast But no increase of speed or distance makes things last I work up, I work in I drill down to the truth, but that truth feels thin. Every direction is uniquely the same. Pointing a heading never escapes the frame, never leaves the frame. I make time, I make guard. Every effort just returns me to the start. I speak blessing, I do sin. Every end unlocks a door where I begin again I rush off or I wait Neither works, I cannot seem to concentrate Slick the wet, grip the dry At the end I am alone, I don't know why None of my circling motions ever touch, I know they pass above or else they simply pass below else else they pass below then I never think of stopping never pause the pace ever always only in the race the lack of a destination 
will not hold me back Look high, look low at you Watch me, I make time, I make art, I speak blessing, I do sin. I rush off for I wait, slick the wet, hold the dry at the end. I'm alone and I don't know why at the end. I'm alone and I don't know why, don't know why. Don't know why. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. <laughs> Good one. Hey there, Mike. Hey there. How are you doing, Penny? I'm well. It's good to listen to you again. Um, boy, you had two great songs, a toe tapper and a crying in your beer. <laughs> no, cry, crying, crying, but not in my beer. <laughs> that that um, that first song that was awesome. The um, the half past sober, I love that line. That's fantastic. I do believe that qualifies as a real country song. Yeah, <laughs> that is possible. I'm real country. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. And, and before I forget it, you know, I kept listening to your voice. I'm like, God, who does he remind me of? Like. It reminds me of these Doc Watson records I used to listen to all the time. And that's a compliment because I love Doc's voice. Well, um, well, I, I got a little story about that. I was oh, a let's hear young, it. Young fellow, we had just moved down to Southern California. That's the part of California that really isn't, you know. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was at a place called McCabe's. It's a music store, very, really quite a famous music store down there. And I wanted to learn... Um, uh, Oh, shoot, now I never remember names of anything anymore. But anyways, this this little old-time tune that I wanted to learn. Uh, Wildwood Flower, that was it. I wanted to learn Wildwood Flower. I wanted to learn Pick It on the guitar. I'd been playing guitar for a you know, year or so, a couple of years maybe. And um, the guy said, well, I don't know if any of our regular teachers know it, but I bet if you walk over to that guy in the corner over there, I bet he can show you how to play Wildwood Flower. I turned around and I said, which guy? He says, that guy there. And I said, the blind one? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, I went, so I went and got my hour and a half lesson from uh, Mr. Watson. Whoa, that's a fantastic that's a, that's story, That's a good Mike. one, man. Um, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Lovely man. Lovely man. Generous, warm-hearted. Yeah, yeah so, so I've heard, yeah. Man. Talk about talk about a big influence on a on a person, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I I immediately went out and whined to my parents until I had all the records, both of the records, roughly. I think that he had by that time. Right. Nice. nice. And uh, hey, I understand you've got uh, some gigs coming up. Do you want to talk about any of those? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I have one. Uh, well, I have two gigs on the same day at the same event. Um, uh, both of them with. Uh, with people who've been on Open Mic America before, uh, and one of them's with uh, Jamie Knapp, uh, bass player, and Ms. Daphna Ramil. Nice, fabulous violin player. Uh, yeah. I may, I may do the hard work of uh, attempting to get her to sing a little bit. She's uh, a little reticent about doing that nowadays because she has to learn so much stuff for her uh, other band, which is also playing today. But earlier in the day, going to open the show with a guy who's been on here several times named Andy Karn. Oh, yeah. And uh, Andy and I play. And when I play with Andy, it's Andy's show. I just I just contribute uh, small dribs and drabs of things from the side mm -hmm. and uh, that kind of thing. So I'm doing that. And then um, what's next after that? About the next one I'm sure of after that is again with Andy Karn in October. We're doing a house concert in uh, San Jose. Nice. So Mike, on that first gig, did you tell us where that was? Right, so if you are uh, familiar at all with Northern California, Palo Alto is the, the place where the Stanford University is in, in that town. And right down the middle of town, 
is a big old street called University. And where University meets Webster is one end of a sidewalk, you know, evocation of art and, and, and music and fun and food and that kind of stuff that goes down uh, about 10 blocks. And we're at one end, and then it goes down 10 blocks the other end. And uh, the California Coast Music Camp sponsors the what's called the Webster Street Stage. CCMC is an organization I've been involved with it for, you know, not quite going on 30 years, but something like that. Um, the uh, the Webster Street Stage is sponsored by them, and two of their big um, board member contributor people, uh, Janet and Jeff, run that stage and bring battery power and everything like that. It's a really very nice sounding venue. Um, uh, I recommend it if you're in Northern California. If you're not, fly in. Um, and uh, uh, come we'll on down. Our tickets now. There we go. Because uh, no, it's it's a two day thing. I'm playing on only on Saturday, but uh, people like Steve Kritzer are playing the next day. And uh, the closing act, uh, Andy and I open, but the closing act is uh, also a Daphne Rumil production uh, type thing. She's part of a band called According to Bazooka. I believe oh, yeah. I have that right. Um, and uh, they're going to close the show there. And they've been on Open Mic America. Yes, am I right? They've been on OME? Yeah, Daphne will tell us later. Anyway, yes. That all sounds fantastic, Mike. It was so good to hear you again. Yep, great songs. We appreciate you. Yeah. And quickly answer all the other questions. Paul Simon, of course, the gentleman we just talked about, James Taylor, and among living musicians, uh, living active musicians around here, uh, people like Stevie Coyle and uh, Ed Johnson, Carol McComb, those, those people around here for my influences. And how do I write a song? I just write it. <laughs> and obviously right. you're psychic because you... I am telepathetic. I'm worthless at a distance. Yes. <laughs> awesome. That was great uh, talking to you again, Mike. Let's turn it back to Daphne so she can introduce the next performer. Right, well, thank you. thank you for your music, Mike, and for being so amusing and for all the public service announcements. That's great. Um, and for your work on the show, too. And next we have Ron Smith from Jefferson City, Missouri. And Correct. his current open mics are Sunrise Beach Open Mic in Sunrise Beach, Missouri. Rob's VOM, oh, virtual open mic, yeah, uh, from Baltimore, Maryland, and Music Matters Showcase, the one that we just heard about from Joseph Isaac. So Shut take up. it away, Mr. Smith. Okay, I will do that. I love that telepathetic, worthless at a distance. That's going right in here. That's coming out here sometime when it's opportune. I love that. <clears throat> Okay, I got a couple of songs tonight for you that uh, this one here is uh, my newest and um, I have a issue with feeling songs deeper than they should be felt. So sometimes that gets in my performance. <clears throat> I apologize ahead of time in case that happens. But uh, this is uh, really kind of a picture of where I am these days. <laughs> Never felt this way before It's like someone opened up a door That I didn't even know was there It didn't make a sound I don't see it When I look around There's just something different in the air Mystery gets deeper every day Things I thought I knew before The fading away I used to think that I had to know where I came from and where I'm gonna go, but that's not important to me now. 
Cause what will be is what will be And it wasn't ever up to me I don't know why I thought that anyhow Mystery gets deeper every day Things I thought I knew before Fade in the wave Mystery gets deeper every day Things I thought I knew before Just fading away Now every morning it's something new But it isn't just a chapter two It's like starting over every day I want to see what I haven't seen and I want to be what I haven't been and I want to keep living life that way. Let mystery get deeper every day. Let the things I thought I knew just keep on fading away, fading away. Fading away, fading away, fading away. That was so beautiful. Thank you. Wow. <clears throat> now, this second song I uh, wrote for my wife, I wrote this quite a few years ago. Um, it's called More Than I Realized. We are, this November, going to be celebrating number 49. I've been married 49 years. God knows how she put up with me for that kind of time. <clears throat> but, uh, I'm, one of the reasons I'm playing this is because it's in the same tuning. I'm playing an open D here tonight, and rather than switch guitars or have to retune, I thought, well, I'll do something in the same key. When I look into your eyes When I am looking at you I realize that I love you Much more than I realize When I am looking at you and I see into your eyes I realize that I love you Much more than I realize I see an honesty there A heart so willing to share even though it has been wounded More times than I've been aware I see things you're dreaming And things you're daring And things there just aren't words to say Please forgive me, I know I'm staring, but I just can't look away.
I see a beauty in you Each day it blossoms anew Growing with each passing season Coloring all that you do What you have given to me Is what I see in those eyes And I realize that I love you Much more than I have realized That was the sweetest song ever. You know, a person who doesn't get choked up by what they're playing really isn't feeling it, you know. Yeah. We know at least one guy who will full-on full break down when he's playing and shows no shame. So good good for you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, music is emotional, isn't it? It is for me. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. And so when you're, you're writing songs... I'm I'm guessing, I don't know, you'll tell me, um, you probably are starting with the way you feel and then working from there? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes? <laughs> what about the other times then? I'm like everybody else, you know, it's different stuff hits at different times and, yeah. you know, you catch, a, you catch a riff somewhere, somebody says something funny to you and you think, oh, golly, I got to find a way to get that into a song. Right, but, right. But... Um, yeah. I like my songs to mean something uh -huh. to me, um, to, to uh, rip off an old saying from way back when, uh, talking about the, I think uh, the um, United Negro College Fund or something like that, they used to have ads on TV said a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Yep. Uh -huh. I feel that way about a song, a song's a terrible thing to waste, you know, just to write a song to write a song because you know i mean you know, i'm not knocking people to do it but you know like these things of trying to write 28 songs in 28 days and stuff like that mm -hmm. you know I, I i can crank out a two-line commercial jingle in about 10 seconds but but i like them to i like them to uh, mean something to me so. right yeah that makes sense and how long have you been playing and writing songs well i've been playing um for a long time I had the uh, first abortive attempts when I was a, a you know young kid, mm -hmm. and got one of those twenty nine ninety five or less guitar kits that had the action about six inches high, and, <laughs> and <laughs> got, got nowhere. But uh, sometime sometime in high school, a gal showed up with a uh, I think it was a baritone ukulele, mm -hmm. uh, or if not, it was a four just a four string little guitar. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was tuned like a guitar, but. Mm -hmm. And I had been, I had, I kind of knew how to play the uke, so I could, I could get my hands wrapped around that, mm -hmm. and that sort of sparked me a little bit. And I, I, uh, but then when I got in the army, I got a guitar and I was playing. I was playing with a guy, and, and he was much better than I was. And he'd talk me into, wrote me into playing stuff with him. Like I remember, we played the daft, draft dodger rag for an officers club meeting <laughs> one time when I was in, <laughs> in training, <laughs> and I. <laughs> I fouled that thing up a hundred ways from no place, you know, but it was, it was terrorizing, but it was fun. And I kind of got bit. Got to ask, how did that go over? Uh, well, actually they, you know, they laughed uh, okay. because, uh, we were bold enough, I guess, to, to do something like right. that. Right. That's exactly you know, kind of like what the, I was going to use. Bold yeah. has a bold move. Yeah. 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 They gave us hood spot points for that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, but, uh, as far as songwriting goes, I've I've done quite a bit, but as far as I really got in the last four years or so, I've really gotten um, more serious about it. And I just retired in March, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's great. I can now spend a lot more time on my music. Mm -hmm. But um, 
I've got about, well, probably 30, 30 or 40 songs that I've written that I probably remember well enough to play them. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say they're all good ones, but they, but uh, that's, it's fairly steady. Uh-huh. That's fantastic. And um, musical influences? Um, I love storytellers like James Taylor. Mm -hmm. I love uh, the way that uh, like um, Alison Krauss, well, James Taylor too, the way, that, the way they phrase their, their songs when they sing. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then when I, uh, several years ago, I had a detached retina and had like seven tears in it. And when uh, the surgery got done and they woke me up, they uh, notified me that I was going to have to sit in a position straight up for nine days in order Holy for this thing moly. to heal. Oh, no. So during that time, I listened to a lot of music and I came across two that might not seem to fit in everybody's rotation. One was Robert Earl Kane and one was, uh, one was Lyle Lovett. Oh, yeah. And um, boy, Lyle Lovett, boy, he's a genius, man. I'll tell you what, that guy writes some good songs and, play, you know, some good music and good songs. Oh. And Robert Earl Kane, very entertaining. And I, I am happy to see him on Austin City Limits and just kind of got bit by him, too. So oh. just a lot of different people and but mostly old folkies and stuff. I, Peter, Paul, and Mary's where I really cut my teeth back in the day. I wore their records through both sides. Yeah, I was kind of the gold standard, you know? Yeah. Are you, uh, are, you are you doing any gigging? Are you playing out any? Well, I have been. Uh, yeah, I did a, a show down in Sunrise Beach, just a one-man show in that place where I do the open mics a couple, about uh, as in April. And then um, I did, uh, there was a thing uh, called Make Music America. Uh, just this last, it was out in the summer solstice, 20, uh, June, July, June 21st. And um, uh, just players from all over the world just took that day to find some place to play out, you know, let, let the music go outside. Yep. I managed to get into a studio where they gave me an hour to play and I just played and they actually recorded it and video, video recorded it and cool. gave me a real nice recording of my whole hour. So that was cool. That is cool. Yeah, and I've done, uh, there's a thing called Song Swap up in uh, Columbia, Missouri at a, at a place called Dive Bar, and I've been, I've done a couple of those, and I uh, was actually on the radio for a, a radio show you know, a couple months back as well, so I'm starting to get around a bit. Fantastic. Yep. Right on. Well, Ron, it was a pleasure listening to you, and thanks so much for entertaining our questions. <laughs> You're welcome. Keep those songs coming, man. Keep them coming, and congratulations Alrighty. on your upcoming anniversary. That's fantastic. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, Ron. And I've got to say that line about that I love you more. I realized that I love you more than I realized. You know, I get it, but it's very funny too. And I like that it's just a little bit funny while it's sweet at the same time. So thank you for that. Um, let's see, who do we have? We have Bill Palmer from Murray, Kentucky. And he likes to play at the Johnson Bar in Paducah, Kentucky. And also he plays virtually at the Pand Open Mic and sometimes at Open Mic Corona. Take it away, Bill. Hello, hello. Let's see. If I, I can only see myself here, but so I'm assuming if I don't hear from anybody that uh, everything is set up properly. Uh, this uh, song, the, the, not the complete title, but in the title is the name Grooves or the word Grooves. And it's a result of losing my phone, uh, having a friend that had a very serious problem that I was very upset about and having to have a way to deal with it. And uh, a bike ride um, near dunes on the beach. So. I got a letter from my doctor, well I got it in the mail. Said I missed my appointment, my health could be in peril. They said this was the second time I missed our health meeting. Well, I scratched my head and began to think who this darn doctor was. Thought that I wasn't in the 
ache when I went to the doctor. I didn't really recognize him. He said I had a problem and I should realize it then. He sat me down and looked me in the face and said, here's a situation. That I have to embrace I'm losing grooves in my brain And I'll never be the same I'm losing grooves in my brain And I'll never be the same I'm losing grooves in my brain I'm losing grooves in my brain He said, well, I'll never be the same He said, well, your brain's got lots of ridges Just like a vinyl record when you put that needle down, your memories play a song, making music in your brain. He said, well, it's sort of like a chord, but sand is blowing all around deep inside my head, slowly filling up my ridges with lots of sand instead. So when I place that needle down, to play a pretty song I get snaps and pops Playing all day long Well I got snaps and pops And cherry lollipops I got snaps and pops And cherry lollipops I got snaps and pops With ice cream and sprinkles on the top I've got pops and snaps And big old memory gaps I've got sand in my brain more like a drifting snow Covering up my grooves And almost everything I know I got a letter from my doctor Well, I got it in the mail He said I missed my appointment My health being hell He said this was like the ninth time I missed our big old health meeting Well, I scratched my head commence to think who this darn doctor was that thought that I wasn't in the pink I'm losing grooves in my brain and I'll never be the same I'm losing grooves in my brain and I'll never be the same I got snaps and pops and cherry lollipops I got the pops and snaps and big old memory gaps I got sand in my brain more like a drifting snow a covering of my grooves and almost everything I know I'm losing grooves in my brain I got a letter from my doctor Well, I got it in the mail I'm losing grooves in my brain I'm losing grooves I'm losing grooves in my brain and I'll never be the same I'm losing grooves in my brain but I'm feeling just the same Wow! Second one is uh, kind of different, I guess. Hold on, I've got to figure out a way to make this change. Sorry for the delay. And this sort of fits in with what uh, Joseph Isaacs was saying about celebrity. This is. Uh, called Celebrity Love Letter. It's kind of, I'm not a big fan of celebrity, although I guess if I was a celebrity, I would like it. But um, it's kind of a, a sad love letter to celebrities, maybe a, a very honest one.
watch you in the cafes and we watch you in the bars. We watch you talking to your people when you're driving in your car. We don't care about what you know, all we care about is what you do. Life is like a great big wheel, all we care about. Is how you make us feel You think we want your money As we watch you dance around your social indiscretions And we go into a trance You shake it on the dance floor Showing off your moves Flaunting your successes Like you've got something to prove S O P S O. Do you think that we love you? We don't know what's in store for you, but we've got nothing to lose. We hope you'll push it to the limit. We never disapprove. O P S O P S O. Do you think that we love you? We are the all together, we are the through and through, we are all those people who really don't care about you. And when we finally ask you about those things you know, we've got our fingers in our ears, we're turning up our nose. We don't care about your soul, but we really like your clothes. Uh -huh. We don't care about your soul, but we really like your clothes. We don't care about what you know, all we care about is what you do. Life is like a great big wheel, all we care about is how you make us feel. We watch you in the cafes, we watch you in the Watch you talk to people when you're driving a car. Well, we don't care about what you know, we care about is what you do. Life is like a great big wheel, all we care about is how you make us feel. Watch you in the cafes and we watch you in the bars. We watch you talking to your people when you're driving in your car. And we don't care about what you know, we care about what you do. Life is like a great big wheel, all we care about is how you make us feel. Wow. Amen. Hey okay, guys. Hi there. Bill. How you doing, man? I'm good. Um, hmm. I gotta say one thing about that first song. There's, <laughs> there's something about writing a light-hearted sounding song about some heavy stuff that mm -hmm. I really enjoy. It's, it, I, I, it's I, sometimes I just only, you know, you want to express something, but you know, if you go down that hole, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? But it still needs to be said. Sometimes it's, I don't know. It just seems. Yeah. A peppy, a peppy song about something, something hard is. I mean, it's kind of like myself putting in my, myself, trying to imagine the situation that my friend was in as he, got worse and worse and worse. And my question, I was always asking myself, does he have any idea that he's changing? And I don't, I don't know. You know, my wife and I were talking about that yesterday in the car and I'm just like, yeah, you know. So one, yeah. one of the, the common themes I get from both of those songs too is that, that this is like, you know, 
coping strategy that mm-hmm. that a lot of <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. how do you how do you process this stuff that mm-hmm. has no no easy answers to mm-hmm. you know you write a song about it i guess yeah I, I think so and then you, i think then you you know you have what you think is a good thought you know or maybe not a good thought but maybe to go boldly maybe an important thought you know that somebody else might be interested in thinking about but you know you can't really bring it up in a conversation or you can but you know but it's you know maybe you could like just kind of put it out there and then yeah we can laugh about it but go Meh, you know right. you know right. so I think a lot of you know a lot of the songs you heard tonight are you know similar kind of a situation you know you can't That's hard cool. to you'd like to have that conversation but there, it's hard to find that person to have that conversation with but maybe you could put in a song and then you could sneak up in front of people and it's like a bar and nobody's listening you can just say it right <laughs> Well, and if somebody does, suddenly they get permission to have those thoughts. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. got it. You know. Yeah, slightly forbidden conversation thread, but okay, we got that now. Difficult too. for for daily combo. Well, and it's kind of you know like you plant the seed. You know, you right. maybe you know. I, I guess I spent thirty plus years as a teacher of sorts. You know, so I guess there's <laughs> the feeling that you're always trying to you know spread some information, maybe. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And correct me if this isn't um, of what you're going for, but it does seem like, as Rob said, you had a light touch for a, a heavy topic. Um, is humor important in your daily life and in your songwriting? Uh, I think it, the idea of a coping mechanism is probably pretty right on. <laughs> uh, I, I get accused of probably, you know, not being as serious as I should, telling you, you know, trying to make light of things that maybe you shouldn't. But uh, for me, it's it's important, and yeah. uh, uh, it, it's been a, you know I think we've all probably had some pretty dark situations, and uh, for me, it's been very helpful. And hopefully, luckily, I don't have much of that for a long time. But hey, you know what to do when it comes along, though, right? <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps deflecting. <laughs> <laughs> well, or absorb and redirect. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. There you go. yeah, maybe, maybe. Well, your your voice and your guitar are beautifully matched. I really enjoyed both of those songs. Well, thank you. I, I try to work hard on um, having the technology and the instrument, and then trying to get better at the instrument and the voice to make that happen. So it's nice, and it's. I mean, it's especially nice to play in front of. You know, compared to playing at an open mic or even somewhere where you're featured and nobody's really listening, I this is like the best thing that I can do really is to have other people that are sweating too to 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 make a high quality product to go out there and put it out there in front of those people who for the most part are listening, right, you guys? <laughs> and, but it is, it's special. To me it is. Um that I, I, I like knowing that that's there. Oh, and I got to give you props for that range. You hit a couple of really low notes and a couple of really high yeah, notes. Yeah, I try to, I try to I'll like on some of the other open mics that I do, I'll, I'll try to do some Roy Orbison and then I'll try to do, you know, low stuff, but constantly trying to, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to expand your range, but, you know, I think I've expanded it a quarter step maybe. <laughs> you know, Same song, that. that's a bold thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, and I try to do that. I try to challenge myself to at least have a, a couple you know, little places where I can try to, you know, slip on a banana if I'm not careful, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was wonderful, Bill. Thank you yeah. so much for those songs, and we'll look forward to hearing you again on Open Thank Mind. you. Thank you so much for the interview and everybody for listening. Thank Definitely you. Definitely our pleasure. Yeah. Well, next time. Thank you, Bill. And yes, we were listening. <laughs> we were listening. And um, and it will be on YouTube for posterity so more people can listen. That was wonderful. Thank you. Um, we only have two more performers tonight. Uh, we're going next to Nashville, Tennessee, where we have Julie Grower. And she will be at the 12 Key Saloon in Hermitage, Tennessee at 7 p.m. this Wednesday. Um, in the round with Mark Noble, who's also been on our show before, and Brant Miller. 
And she was also included on the July and August edition of Folk Now compilation put out by Hudson Harding Music. Congratulations for that. And Julie, the stage is yours. Hi, Daphna. Thank you. Hi. Thanks, everybody. Um, I've just really enjoyed what I've heard so far tonight. And I appreciate the support and being able to share my music in this venue. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of an older song that is kind of cathartic to me and um, relates to the type of weather that we've been having here in Nashville, where it gets very, very hot, very, very humid. And then we have a big storm, lots of loud lightning and thunder. And uh, so I find that cathartic kind of cathartic and that's what this song is about. The heat waves breaking, here comes the storm. Pounds down on my roof, but I'm dry and warm. Feel that cool away my working day sweat got a paycheck in my pocket gonna help me forget maybe sit out on the front porch rock away the night maybe take a walk downtown where some tunes will set me right you know, these clouds been getting heavy. They're just waiting to burst loose. And the sun's been hiding out all day. Ain't giving out no juice. You know, I work so hard all day. These bills won't go away. And that man just wouldn't stay. He's moving on. The heat waves breaking. Here comes the storm. Leave those windows wide. Let that cool air come inside. These old tears been awaiting like a bunch of heavy clouds gonna mix with all that rain and wash away my doubts going to be on that summer compilation that's going out to folk radio um, the next song I need to just do a very very quick drop D tuning for uh, it's a song I recently wrote with my co-writer Mark Noble who you mentioned so already has been on the show and um, this all started with a song that I wrote about the Komodo dragon 
about a year ago. And I think I played it for you guys at one point. Um, and I decided that really where my heart is right now is to write about the environment, climate change, and especially endangered animals. So this is part of a series of songs that we're writing on animals that are endangered species. Um, this animal was an endangered species and we brought it back. So it's just to show you that it can be done if we put our minds to it. It's called Second Chances. Coming back to fill the skies Nesting, soaring high, so high We watch in wonder Majestic bird of prey Knowing how close we came To ending your royal Headed for a silent spring We almost lost you for all time But we stopped the poison Nations built on strength and pride Call you their spirit guide Created when the world was new Still and watchful on your perch Show us how to heal the earth With your vision could we somehow see A way to live in harmony We stopped the poison
Hi, Julie. Hi. Those are two wonderful, very passionate songs. Tell us mm -hmm. more about how you came to write them and what are your thoughts on the environment and endangered species? I know you have something to say about that. Um, well, wow. So my environmental work uh, started combining with music pretty early on when I was an undergraduate at SUNY New Paltz and got involved with um, a project called Save the Mountain, which was uh, a project to keep the Marriott Corporation off of Lake Minnewaska and try to turn it into a state park. We were successful um, with the help of the Sierra Club and a lot of other really wonderful people, including my good friend, Michael Klein, who I think is watching here tonight. And um, we did an anniversary event and that kind of like re-sparked my whole idea that I could use my music for activism and climate change. And the Komodo Dragon song, which I wrote about a year ago, came about just as kind of, um, it was an assignment for a song critique group. And we were asked to write a song with the word dragon in it. <laughs> and I was ah. like, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But at the time, I was feeling very passionate uh, about wanting to write a song about the environment mm -hmm. and climate change because I hadn't done anything like that in a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> good old Google, you know, I, I just typed in dragon and climate change and along came all this information about the Komodo dragon in Indonesia. And so that started a deep dive for me on researching the animal, finding out more about it and finding out that there are only about 3,000 left in the whole world mm -hmm. and that it's an animal that's been around since prehistoric times. Um, and so, um, yeah, that, that's kind of what, in, what got this all started for me. That's very cool. And are you performing anywhere that um, folks in your area can, can listen? Sure. Um, I've got two gigs coming up at 12 Keys Saloon. One is this Wednesday and the, then again the following Wednesday. And then uh, that's in Hermitage, Tennessee. It's a great venue. It's owned by a guy who's also a musician and really supports singer-songwriters. Um, and it's there's another um, coffee house in downtown Nashville right next to the Nashville Library. Um, where I'll be playing on July 18th, and that's a place called um, the Copper Branch, and nice. it's a wonderful vegetarian restaurant, um, and I'll be hosted there by a, what, a great um, group called Credenda, who are a family group of singer-songwriters. They're all related, wonderful Very people. Very cool. So, yeah. Well, it was great listening to you tonight, this afternoon. Thank you. And take care, Julie. Yep. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Daphna, who's up Thank next? Thank you for those songs, Jolie. And I do remember the Komodo dragon song. And I just wanted to point out that Rob and Penny have some endangered species in their um in their video feed. It's it's a yeah, it's a it's a yellow octopus. Mm -hmm. There's probably not many of those alive left in the world. And um yeah. I was just thinking of that. Thank you, Julie, and good luck with your gig on Wednesday. And now we only have one performer left, and that would be somebody who's never been on our show before, so it's a big treat. Susan Lee Anderson from Taunton, Massachusetts. And once a month, she's a guest at the Songwriters in the Round at Union Brew House in Weymouth, Massachusetts. And she, um, second time opener for Stoll Homestead Summer Concert Music series, <laughs> series with the Plymouth Rock Band. She's been at Catbird Cafe at the New England Wildlife Center in Weymouth, Massachusetts. And occasional Saturday night virtual open mics. Um, Rosalind open mic once a month and on second Mondays, you are very busy, Susan. We are very grateful to have you here tonight. So please take us home. Thank you. I'm going to take my headphones off um, because, well, maybe it will work. I don't know. I'll try it. <laughs> um, the first, uh, actually the two songs that I chose um, kind of happened by accident, but they end up being um, one of the first ones I ever wrote. 
which I didn't start writing until um, 2008. And uh, I had always been noodling around with, with music. Uh, my first instrument is a piano. Um, so I use it as a tool. Um, and the second one is kind of like a full circle from where the first one started. So <laughs> one is about kind of leaving a relationship and one is wanting to save the one I'm in. <laughs> So, the one first one is called um, I've Got News for You. Okay. I know you think I sit around all day playing twiddle big, twiddle down. I know you think I've nothing better to do than sit around twiddling my thumbs. But I keep the house and mind the kids, wait for you to come home. And you call and say you'll be late, but don't come home at all. I've got news for you. So this one was just, um, I just wrote it this year, actually I got uh, laid off in um, October 
and I've been doing this time off to be honest um, so I've got four songs I've been working on a new one just uh, but it's not ready yet so this one I've got your ring one two three one two three one two three go We're gone before the morning Give it back is what you say But it's mine and that's forever Said the words inside my head So I pulled myself together Prepared for my the logic and the reasons began to make some sense. I have your ring. I want it back. I want your love, not your attack. You said it's over, and then it's not. It's what you do. When you disregard the answers in my reach to understand, it denies my right for truth in every moment that I can. It's okay in your confusion in the midst of your new crisis. But it's not okay for me in my distress This can't go on It's too much pain Too much sorrow Too much rain I have revealed My heart's regret Seek to forgive Not to forget Hearts don't forget. Da 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 da. 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 But this is not the first time. Don't build a house just to tear it down. You build a bridge on solid ground. See who I am, the same no flame. Hear what I say. I have your ring.
there, Susan. Hi there. <laughs> Welcome to Open Mic America. This is your first time? First time visiting awesome. here, yes. Awesome. So, did you say that you've only written four songs? I've only, I, I've only written, I've been starting writing um, in 2008. Uh -huh. And um, I've been slowly exploring lots of different things, not just writing, but um, harmonizing with others. I play with another band, um, Plymouth Rock Music Band. And so um, I work on some of their material as well. Uh, so I like to lend my voice to projects and so forth. So we, I have a couple of CDs that I've been working on also. And some new songs this year. So we'll see where it goes. <laughs> and uh, may I ask, where are you from originally? I am from West Bridgewater, Massachusetts. I grew up on a dairy farm okay. in rural West Bridgewater, Mass. And um, my family comes from a, a long line of um, self-employed um, entre entrepreneurial people. And I have a little bit of that in my background as well. So, nice. yeah. I was just, I could pick up a little bit of a East Coast. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. But it lends itself very well to the style of music that you play. And I really like that you did the finger picking on the first song and a little bit more of just, a, a, I guess, a strum pattern the second mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he's, he's got the mo musical vocabulary. I, there. I take it, I take it you've been singing most of your life, right? I'm sorry? I take it you've been singing most of your life. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, in my living room, it wasn't until 2008, like I said. I've started writing and also getting out into the open mic scene um, through a friend of mine who encouraged me to come out of my living room. <laughs> Um, my kids were almost, you know, pretty well grown at that point, And I started feeling like I could take the time to do that because my focus up to that point was raising two beautiful, beautiful children, um, to adulthood. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, I guess it, it, it just, he uh, let me know that it was time for me to do a little something on my own, not just play sitting at my, you know, piano, um, and also my guitar. I didn't really, I'm self-taught, so I have a lot of bad habits, but um, uh, piano was my first instrument and, and I really only had a year before we moved. So I took what I learned in that at age 11 um, and just kept playing it. I improvised with what I had. Um, and my mom was a classical pianist, so she always would just say, oh, that's not right, that's not right. So she kept me on track. She couldn't really teach me how to play classically um and but i didn't want that i wanted my own sound i wanted my to do my own thing with it and to be able to you know improvise was the best thing that i ever learned how to do you definitely um, so, fall out your way with that definitely sure. yeah and now i find i'm also starting to play a little bit lead too with the plymouth rock music band they let me take my little uh, solos here and there so it's a lot of fun nice. yeah cool. well be, be bold because uh, you got a lot to offer definitely thank you good. thank you Thank your friend for encouraging you. I'm I will. I see him every Tuesday. We practice over at the Soul Homestead Education Center, which is probably why we get asked to open the the, the concert series now for the second year in a row. We've we've got a good sound. Um, he's he leans towards progressive rock, and um, I also uh, my musical partner, um, other partner, <laughs> is uh, more of a roots player. So um, they both play on my songs, but it's interesting to 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 hear. Um, what they do with it because the basic song is the same but the what they you know bring to it is just it I love hearing the variety and what they're um, you know they can bring the song to just a different level to totally different feel from what I expected it would sound like um, I just love that exploration and also I think variety is the spice of life has been my motto all my life honestly including up to husbands too so <laughs> Well, I say nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, no. It's just the way it is. That's the way it is. That's just how life goes sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. So did you want to uh, plug any gigs you got coming up? Um, yeah, you know, later, I, I didn't think about this earlier when I was giving the information oh, yeah. to Daphna, is that um, we, as a band, we're playing the, uh, you know, Plymouth, Massachusetts, right? You know, 
you heard about Plymouth, Massachusetts, but they have an, every year they have um, an annual porch fest. Sometimes it's in the spring and sometimes it's this one happens to be in um, August. So we've been invited to play outdoors in a um, for a two hour slot. But they asked us if we wanted to stay for the second one. And we, of course, said yes, because we're already set up. Wouldn't that be great? And we have an hour between that. So on August 27th, it's um, it's a Saturday. I believe and so we're playing a full two sets down there and so we have a lot of songs between everybody in the band we have we're never gonna run out of material to play we play a little bit of uh, our own uh, original songs but um and we play on each other's original stuff so uh, uh covers he's uh, we lean into classic rock um just a whole <laughs> just a huge genre of, of range of stuff that we play like thea gilmore um trying to think who's on my my list we play a lot of ccr love that stuff i grew up listening to you know whatever was on the radio but my dad was also a guitarist so i listened to a lot of hank williams as a child love 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 that stuff and i i sing uh with the choir at church too so um i love i love um just uh being part of the whole music scene and just it's just opened up a whole new world to me and i feel like it's given me a place to sort of belong and I don't feel isolated at all. You know, not, it's just wonderful. Love being part of that. Well, you're definitely an asset here. We appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for having me. And let's um, go back to Daphna. Yes, Susan. Thank you. We're so glad that somebody got you out of your living room. And then you got right back in your living room in order to play yep. for us today. See, it all came <clears throat> full circle. So yep. thank you. Thank you very much. And I guess, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to, I needed to clear my throat without everybody listening to that. Um, so we have come to the end of our show. Um, and I want to thank all our performers one by one. And we're just going to go in the order of performance. Bill Hernandez from Portland, Oregon. William Waltz from Raleigh, North Carolina. Joseph Isaacs from Columbia, Maryland. Mike Simpson from Saratoga, California. Ron Smith from Jefferson City, Missouri. Bill Palmer from Murray, Kentucky. Julie Grower from Nashville, Tennessee, and Susan Lee Anderson from Taunton, Massachusetts. Um, remember to check our website, um, Open Mic America, for links to all the music for the performers that you hear on our show. Also, every YouTube has um, a little description with links um, on each of the YouTubes, but you can find information on each performer and where they've played on the show, right on the website. Just go to performers, check their name, and you'll find it all. I want to thank our host and founder, Capo Dave Williams, for, for being our intrepid engineer today. And also thank Rob and Penny Cork for your marvelous interviews. Mm -hmm. um, they are also Open Mic America performers, by the way. People wear a lot of hats around here. And um, I'm Daphna, your MC. Thank you to the audience who's been watching on YouTube. And if you like the show, spread the word. Don't keep it a secret. Um, you can download t-shirts from the website and posters or just tell your friends to tune in and send them a link. We are always here on the first three Sundays of every month. So we're going to be here again next Sunday and the one after that. Same time, same station. And for now, we are going to say good night, America.
If you meet me at the corner of Russell and Albina, just about a block from Mississippi Avenue, I'll take you to a house where they hang carpets on the wall. And if we go there on a Sunday, there's a song I'll take you through.